Hello, this is William C. Head with Team DUI. This is part four of our series on blood alcohol level, blood alcohol charts, BAC level charts, things that help you determine how much alcohol you can drink and be safe to drive. People think that if they wait an hour after their last drink, they're going to be safe to drive, and this is almost always not true. One hour is not enough time. They feel less buzzed due to the adjustment of their body and brain after the alcohol has reached the absorptive stage, and they have a more euphoric feeling during the absorptive phase and before the elimination phase. During elimination, the brain does not feel so euphoric, and people then start wanting to get home and go to sleep. The truth is that over 90% of all drinkers will be eliminating between 0.015 grams percent per hour, plus or minus about a 0.004. An easy rule of thumb is that 0.01 grams percent of alcohol leaves the body every 40 minutes. The rate of alcohol elimination is virtually linear or at a very steady rate, meaning that you cannot do exercise or drink coffee or energy drinks to make the elimination go fast. The alcohol elimination curve shown here would show a drinking pattern starting around 10.30 and the alcohol rising to its peak and then starting the elimination phase. As you can see, the rate of increase in the absorptive phase is going to be a little bit sharper generally than the rate of elimination which is only a 0.015 per hour. If you're pulled over and arrested for DUI and then your read your implied consent rights, you're going to be asked to take a blood or a urine test. This will determine your BAC level and under state law your jurisdiction will have a certain number of hours typically that the blood can be collected or the breath can be collected and that number will relate back to the time of the stop to show whether or not you are over the legal limit. Forensic breath testing devices will have a printout that can be used against you in court. These devices are typically at a police station or in a Batmobile and not the handheld detectors at the roadway which are almost always voluntary and optional and they're not required in order to keep your license. Only when you refuse the test at the station, breath test or blood test, can you lose your license by virtue of refusal. If you've taken a blood test or breath test and you're facing a criminal offense from consuming too much alcohol, such as driving under the influence, underage possession of alcohol by a minor, or MIP, homicide by vehicle, which can also be called vehicular manslaughter, or even public intoxication, you need a skilled criminal defense attorney who has hundreds of hours of advanced forensic blood alcohol level training to help him or her be able to challenge the prosecutor's evidence against you. The purpose of establishing Team DUI and joining attorneys together from across the country who average 20 years or more experience is to provide one location that you can go to when you're facing alcohol or drug offenses that relate to driving or possible loss of license even if you're not driving for certain type of drug offenses. These attorneys are skilled in the law as well as the science relating to the law and that's why we put them together in one place at Team DUI. I hope that this series of information helps you understand your blood alcohol level and how to use a BAC chart in the future.